The boy suffers from allotriophagia. He also has a special ability. He fantasizes about having sex with his favorite girl, Sarah, in class and brings along her best friend. The three of them are having a great time in the dream world. In reality, the girl suddenly starts to tremble and the boy runs out in embarrassment. Covering his pants, his daydreams lead to physical reactions from all three of them. Kelly was as thin as a bone and was often bullied at school because he has a fetish for eating paper and pencils. One day, Kelly was eating a paper cup when he ran into his best friend Sarah. They had a nice conversation, but it was stopped by the group that liked to bully him. They teased Kelly for being a trash boy who likes to eat garbage and put Kelly upside down in a garbage can and threw drinks on Kelly. After they leave, Kelly habitually takes out his clothes and changes. Back at school, Kelly was eating a pencil and the classmate next to him was looking at their phone and started laughing at him. The video that was playing on his phone was the same one that was put in the trash this morning. He bumped into the boy behind him. Under the absolute pressure of his size, Kelly apologizes in fear and walks away. When he got home in the afternoon, not wanting to worry his mother, Kelly went about his business as if nothing had happened, but the stress in his heart made him sick anyway. The doctor who had been treating Kelly felt that Kelly's omnivorism was psychological. He suggested that his mother find him a psychiatrist, but she refused. One day Kelly's mother found a priest with magical powers. She paid for the priest to come home, hoping that he could cure Kelly's allotriophagia. As soon as he touched Kelly, the priest started coughing violently. His magical powers were sucked into Kelly's body. Without his powers, the priest collapsed straight into Kelly's house. By the time the police arrived, the priest had already lost his life. Kelly was getting better every day, he repaired his bike and went back to school and ran into Sarah. His crush, with his allotriophagia under control, Kelly is brave enough to talk to Sarah. But as soon as Sarah left, the boy who liked Sarah came out from behind Kelly. He punched Kelly, but it was boy himself who felt the pain. He picked up the board and hit Kelly on the head again, and the damage rebounded back to him. Kelly looked at the school bully who was covered in blood, and he smiled happily. Without his allotriophagia, he re-entered society and got his first job. At night, the boy's father came to the door. As a school teacher, he accused Kelly of bullying the boy, but Kelly's mother didn't believe the teacher. The next day, Kelly comes to class and picks up Sarah's hairband. He uncontrollably eats the tag on it and fantasizes about the indescribable, but his daydreams lead to physical reactions from the other two. The boy took out a drill and drilled himself in the leg and blood instantly gushed out, but the uninjured student fell to the ground in pain. The boy's injuries would instantly rebound on the others. His name is Kelly and is a boy who was afraid to fight back even when he is bullied. One night the school held a bonfire. When he saw Sarah being harassed, he was no longer afraid and stood up for her. But the teacher seemed to know something. He stopped the boy who tried to hit Kelly and warned Kelly. After the bonfire, Kelly rode his bike home. The drunken boy saw Kelly on the road and tried to run him over. Kelly had to run away, but the speed of the bike was no match for the car. They crushed Kelly hard into the car. But Kelly didn't die. The damage rebounded, and the driver died a horrible death. By the time the police arrived, Kelly's bruises were long gone. The boys, however, were afraid of being blamed, and they slandered the cause of the accident, as Kelly was riding her bike in the middle of the road, and they were too late to avoid the accident. It was at this point that the police finally realized Kelly's special ability. At the same time, the real owner of this ability also came to us. He told Kelly that no one could control this power. This power would bring Kelly to his doom. But without this power, how could he protect his beloved Sarah? Kelly refused. The next day, Kelly's mother fell ill. Kelly, who had never driven a car before, drove his mother's car for the first time to buy her medicine. It was that night that the four remaining boys came back. They thought it was Kelly's mother who drove away. Looking at the small house with only one person left, the four men chained the chains to the beams and towed the house with a car. But the sudden movement caused the gas in the house to start leaking. Kelly's mother tried to escape but found the door locked. The boys who tried to kill Kelly didn't stop there. They brutally dragged the house. Then the gas leak caused the house to explode. By the time Kelly drove back, his mother was dead inside the house. The boys fled without a trace. The police classified Kelly's mother's death as an accident. Sitting in the police car, Kelly ran into the boys, who were also in their car. They talked loudly about Kelly's mother's death and called her a trash mother. They told Kelly that he was the next. At this point, Kelly could no longer suppress the anger inside him. He didn't listen to the police and pulled open the door and jumped out of the car. He wanted to give revenge on his mother in his own way. The boy wrapped his clothes around his neck so hard that the men in the water felt suffocated. The boy strangled himself to the ground 
and the man in the water sank into the water at the same time. Kelly regained his feet. He shook off the clothes around his neck and looked at the drowned boy. He redirected his eyes to the other three men. They were the ones who dragged his house down with a trailer in the middle of the night and killed his mother. Kelly didn't want to forgive them. He picked up another man's clothes again, but just then the police arrived and Kelly ran away. He didn't give up on the idea of avenging his mother's death. The boy's death made the whole town fear Kelly, but Sarah didn't. She talked Kelly out of killing again. She thought he would use other methods to get the rest of the people to confess their sins. Kelly agreed. One day, the students were all in the lab doing experiments. Kelly suddenly came running in. He verbally pushed the boy to try to get them to confess. The angry boy grabbed the acid from the table and threw it in Kelly's face. Instantly his face was burned and it fell to the floor in pain. The damage rebounded again. The boy's damage to Kelly bounced back on himself and he died. This is what Sarah doesn't want to see. She persuaded Kelly not to continue killing. The boy's death draws the police, and Kelly escapes once again. His powers terrified the other boy. He spent the night finding the vine that was used against Kelly and squeezed it into juice to carry with him. The last two boys are left. Kelly hid behind a car. He looked at the boys playing ball with the teacher and planned his revenge. But the police were one step ahead of him. He finally found out the truth about Kelly's mother's death. But there was nothing he could do about the boys who were lying. Just then Kelly came out with a drill. He drilled the drill directly into his own leg. Two holes appeared in the boy's legs instantly. He asked if they had killed his mother. But the other boy suddenly took out the juice he had with him and sprayed it on Kelly. Kelly fell to the ground in pain, feeling his powers disappear instantly. The teacher, who was the boy's father, immediately grabbed the policeman's pistol. And he did not hesitate to shoot Kelly in the head. At that moment, Kelly's ability came back in this instant. The bullet hit the forehead of the father and son. Kelly got his revenge, and Sarah came over at this time. She convinced Kelly to get rid of the special ability in his body. At night, they went with the priest to the place where the power was born. Halfway through the ceremony, a crowd of police officers arrived. They shot Sarah down. Kelly was desperate because he loved Sarah so much. In the end, he chose to destroy himself. At the end of the film, Sarah, who has been shot, wakes up with a strange look on her face. This is a film with an open ending. We don't know who the waking Sarah really is. All we know is that the teacher's connivance in letting his kids bully Kelly on campus is the beginning of all evil. School violence is in every corner of the world. And all we have to do is to remind ourselves not to become the abhorrent perpetrators of violence.